G'day, my name's Surfer in Second Life and I'm doing a little t tutorial on how to make tattoos for your avatar. These are bomb tattoos and I'm doing this because a friend of mine asked me to make a video for her to explain it. So, first things first, I made a folder, wherever that folder is. <laughs> I made a folder called Tattoos, here it is there, and just to make a simple tattoo there's all the things I use, so, and I use GIMP, so we're opening GIMP now, to make the tattoos, so we go back to my folder, there's my folder. First thing I'm going to put out is I use a coloured skin template. Looks like skin colour. I'll put that there first. Then we'll do the torso. Now these are torso templates you can download for free. I will put the link in the video at the bottom of the video. And we'll drop and drag that to there. There we go. Now, other people might do it a different way. This is the way I do it. There may be other ways. I don't know. You know, other people do things their own way. But this is how I've always done it. I didn't... I just do it this way. So, we've got the template. Which is 1024 PNG. And we've got the skin colour there, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to colour this to alpha. Alright, because I like to have a background that I can work on that's not white. I find it harder to work on that. And the next thing I do is I'll reduce that to about 60%. So, I find it invasive when it's up at 100%. I I want to see the outside of the tattoo, so we'll take it back down to 60, we're at about 60, and I'm ready to go to make a tattoo. Now the next thing I'll do is I'll drag the image I want to use, this is the first image I'm going to use, and I'm going to get in a little closer. Now. It's, I want to make, I'm going to make a black and white tattoo, so the first thing I do is I go to the hue saturation, or just the saturation, and take all the colour out of it, so I know that everything's black and white. And that's that. So, we know we've got a black and white image. Sometimes there's borders and little things around the outside of it, so I'm going to cut this out. So I use edit and cut and then I'll edit and paste it and down here we click the create a new layer and it fixes that layer to the screen in GIMP and then I'll delete the layer that's underneath. Now there's commands that people can use and all that sort of stuff. I'm lazy, I don't want to remember commands, so I just use um, the icons that GIMP gives me to use. So now we have our pasted layer. Now I know a lot of the girls like to have a um, nice little henna thing underneath their boobs, so I'm going to drag this over and you can tell that it's too big so I'm going to reduce that opacity down to 33 and now I can see where I'm going to put it so I hit the scale tool and I'm going to scale it down now over here on the scale tool where this is um, a solid 
face, it will scale the image solidly. But I don't want to do it that way, I need to scale it differently. So we're going to click that so the aspects will, I can change the aspects that way, that way. So I'm going to drag this down and put this up and drag this in here. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so it fits in with the breast area and that I've scaled it. So I'll then take the opacity up. Now sometimes it's not as clear as it was before. What happens is <coughs> when you're scaling an image down, up or down, it takes away the clarity of the image. The, I think that's the term that you'd use. It doesn't look too bad, and for the purposes of this tattoo, um, I'm probably going to leave that there. Um, I will go back and I will show you a way to stop that though. So I'm going to edit, I'm going to undo the move layer, I'm going to undo this, the opacity, I'm going to undo the scaling. Now I'm going to go back over to here <coughs> and bring the opacity back up to 100%. Now what you can do is you can go to your filters and you can sharpen this image beforehand. Okay, so actually doesn't look as good as the original image but when you reduce the image it brings it back to a better quality that I had before. So I've sharpened it now, the other thing I should have told you is we need to check the levels of the white area. So I go to levels and there's a line here and sometimes there's a curve that goes out. Now, it's telling me that the white area is perfectly white. If you move this up and down, it brings the white area it increases the white area and if this area is a little bit grey when you bring the white up it takes the grey out so we've checked it it's perfectly white here for our alpha later on so I'll leave that now I'm gonna again I'm gonna cut this out just in case there is some little board around the outside that I can't see so we'll cut it and we'll paste it, there you go, and back down here again to create a new layer, click that icon and it's fixed onto the screen and then we'll delete the layer underneath it and it, once again we're ready to go with our um, image that we're going to put on the tattoo so the next thing we do is we go up to the scale tool Numlat scale tool will take the opacity down to now I like to take the opacity down to about 30 now I can see behind where I want to put it so with our scale to, tool nominated and over here our aspects are ready to go so I can stretch it any way I want so we want it to be halfway each side of the boob there and we're going to bring it down to there that'll do I'm just doing that because I'm I like the look of it to sit like that we'll bring that down a little bit further make it a little bit smaller there we go so the size that you make it is up to you how big you want it to look on the avatar that's up to you so we've scaled it bring this back up to there and that image should be because we 
sharpened it before that image should be a better quality than just reducing it without sharpening before okay so now we want to get rid of the white so we'll go to colors go down to color to alpha boom there you go press ok now we don't have any white and we have an image to use and place where we want it on the um, tally that we're working on so I've got our move tool make sure we have move the active layer and we're going to move the active layer and place it where we want to place it on the body now I'm going to get a little bit closer go up to 200% make sure that it's exactly centered where the where we want it on the tattoo that seems about right to me the breast area seems to finish about here that's the breast line um, so we'll leave that there and move back out to 100% so that's our first image that we're putting on the torso tattoo click back over to here we'll open our tattoo area up again then we're going to put something on the back so I'm going to drop and drag that one there now see how this is a really big I chose this image because it's a very large image and we're going to reduce it a lot and we want to keep the quality of the image so once again we drop the image there we're going to go to filter we're going to go to recently used and we're going to sharpen it now I'm going to sharpen it more than the default if I sharpen it right up here you can see that it changes the image becomes really really sharp I don't need it that much I'm just going to move it 1.1 1 1.2 there we go click OK so now when I reduce the image hopefully it'll hold the quality of the image better than just reducing it without sharpening it back to our scale tool click that click this we're going to leave this um, aspect so I can do it any way I want and I'll explain to you why that happens so we're going to reduce the opacity down to about 30% again we can see where we're going to put it and I'm going to drag it over and start to shape it to the way I want it to go on the back now here's the thing I'm going to roll this up to here now if you're going to make a tattoo for the female body and second life my dogs are barking hey no barking if you're going to make a, a tattoo for the female torso legs in second life especially the torso the back and the front and around the breast area this image here now you can see that I've squashed it a little bit this way okay it was actually a little bit originally it was like this but I've squashed it a little like this so it's wider than it was before because on the female torso when you put an image on the back the tattoo it will shrink it or squash it from left to right so it won't look that wide in game it'll actually look like that it's just something about the it's got to do with the shape of your body and all that sort of stuff and with women's bodies because they're quite slim when you put an image anywhere on the torso you should really stretch it left to right and make it a little bit wider and that way it will when you bring it into the game and you make this bomb layer tattoo when it sits on the body it'll sit 
um, like the image was when you first downloaded it. So we've scaled that, take the opacity up again, and now we have our image ready to go. It's been adjusted so that when it goes in the game and it shrinks from left to right, it should be um, thinner, but still look fine. <coughs> Pardon me. We go up to colors again. We go to levers. And once again, it's telling me that it's perfectly white. The outside here. So that's fine. We don't have to increase that. We're going to go, I'm going to go over to the rectangles, rectangle selects and I'm going to cut it out again. I just do this because I think it's better. Like I said, there could be little marks around the outside of the image, wherever you've downloaded your image from. So we'll cut this out and back down to our create a new layer. Oh. Sorry, <laughs> I've got to paste it. I've got to paste it. There we go, and then we have this floating selection pasted layer. We bring up our create a new layer and fix it to the screen, and then go over here and delete the area underneath it, the original image. And now we've got this image to work with. Like I said before, we checked the levels, it was perfect. So we'll leave it as is. Cancel that and we'll go to colors. Now you can go down here to color for alpha or you can go to filters and you can go to recently used. So we'll go to recently used and we'll color it to alpha. There it is. Press OK. Ta da! So now we've got an image on the front and we've got an image on the back, but it looks like the image on the front of the torso is darker than the image on the back. To fix that problem, what I'll do is I'll go over to the pasted layer, which is this one. I will duplicate that layer and then merge that layer down. So that's that layer there and now the level of black is pretty much the same as the level of black here. So they match, so you won't have a light looking image on the back and you won't have a um, darker and lighter images so they'll, they they match and like before and they didn't match. Now up here we'll get in closer again I'm going to go to 200 and it's not exactly in the middle and I'm very fastidious and I need things to be perfectly symmetrical that's as close as I can get it there and we'll leave that there so there's our two images for front and the back we'll go back out to the original image size and we've got one more that we're going to place on, we're going to place it on the arm so we're going to open our folder again and we're going to drag this one down to here drop and drag and there she is beautiful little mermaid with a flower so I'm going to get in so now I need to put this on the arm so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to layer up the top here and I'm going to go down to transform and I'm going to rotate it from right to left so rotate counterclockwise Ta da and there she is. Now we're going to move her over to the arm area and as you can see she's way too big. I want her to sit in the arm area. I don't want the outside of her to wrap around onto the underside of the arm. So just quickly I will explain something else to you. So I'll take that image off. Now the tragedy <laughs> and I say tragedy because it's it's a nightmare to sometimes it's a real nightmare to um, have to combat this problem <coughs> the front of the torso area here is not the same size as the back layer torso so the front layer is not the same as the back the back layer is slightly larger 
in the front. Go figure. Isn't that just wonderful? It's I could swear in seven different languages about that, but I won't because I'm trying to make a nice video. The same goes for the arm. The back of your arm is slightly larger than the front of your arm. So the front, those two match in size, and these two match in size. It can be really hard later on when you're trying to match when you're trying to put an image that goes from the front and wraps around to the back it's a pain you have to get in very close let's get in very close you can see these lines like this these lines are the other way that your tattoo will distort as you go from left to right and see they're not the same level they're not even at the same level so if you're going to put a you can't just go like that and and hang on I'll make a clear level you can't just go like that say fill that with a black colour I'll just fill it with black that won't match if you if you put that in to the game they won't match what you have to do what you have to do is just quickly I show you this huh why did I paste that on the same level? That was really silly. I'll cut this out. Cut. And I'll paste it. Again, it's a floating section. We go down to our... And so now I have two different areas. So what I, to match this, I would have to place it, say... Let's place it right. Get a getting even closer so it can be exact so we'll place this that line sits right there so we'll place that right there and we go to this layer this layer ha would have to be placed exactly there so you got the top of it again that's still not going to work and I'll show you why the thickness of this will not match the thickness of this. You can see that this comes down one, two, and it's just above, oh, sorry, it's just above the second line. If we go over here, it's not the same. Oh, hang on. What am I doing here? That's terrible move it up to here where it's supposed to be it's supposed to be here just under the line and you can see the difference this line just comes out to there there's only a very small amount here but over here the distance from there to there the second line is larger go figure get old then the labs designing a um, template for the body or designing a body with a template that nothing ever matches it's a nightmare I'm just going to delete these layers it's a it's a real pain anyway back to doing the tattoo so just remember like I said the torsos don't match front to back arms don't match front to back and the other reason why people will, people have asked me in the past why is that if you put text on the arm or you write something on the arm as a tattoo on, on one side it's fine on the other side it's reversed it's because there's only one arm to work with you've only got a front and back of one arm so whatever you put on this arm will be mirrored on 
I think this is the right arm, it will be mirrored on the left. There's nothing you can do about it that I know of. You can probably... Um, I think there is a way through the body, some bodies in Second Life, they actually can... Um, they can do something with the body. There's some scripting in some bodies, but I am not really sure if we can do that at all. I've heard that you can, it can be done. So anyway, back to putting this tattoo on the arm. We have a little flower there. We don't want the flower. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, I'm going to use the what tool, the free select tool, and I'm going to cut her out. I don't want the outside of this border here, and I don't want the flower. There's a little dot there, I don't want that dot. So, we use the free select, we went round her, we're going to edit, we're going to cut her, and we're going to paste her back down. Once again, back down to the create a new layer, and fix the layer to the screen. Move to the original layer, and delete that. And there we have her. There she is. Yay. Yay. Now, the whole tat is black and white. She's got a little bit of a blue tone to her there. So we're going to go up to colors. Once again, you can use hue saturation or you can use saturation. And I'm just going to drag that down to zero. And now she has no color. Press OK. And she's colorless black and white. Now, image isn't exactly clear. So again, we'll go to filters, recently used, we'll go to sharpen. I'm going to sharpen. See, she, see how she went darker when we sharpened her? You can change that by moving the radius down to here. It makes it lighter, it makes it darker. If you move the radius down to here and then bring this amount up, it doesn't make her as as dark but it actually sharpens the image. Now you, it looks quite jagged and stuff like that and you think that doesn't look the best. But pressing OK. When you reduce the image the this jaggedness will become softer. It's not the best image to use but I thought I'd use it anyway. So now we're going to use the scale tool and we're going to scale her and but before we do that I'll explain something else. I'll just reduce it. The edges of the arms blur a little. This is classed as a blur line. It's also an area where you can match them. There's three pinks there, there's three pinks there, yellow and orange, yellow and orange. So if you're gonna put it say a round circle there you need to then put the round circle there half and half and make them match the same size so we'll go back to where she is also up the top here see how these squares are larger than these squares down here that means that whatever you put here will be stretched it'll stretch up and down or when you're looking at the tattoo in the game, it'll stretch left to right. So, whatever happens up here, it's going to be stretched to, to the tattoo down here. And also, where this blur line, blur area is here, as the tattoo comes to the... Let me bring her up. Part of the tattoo, if it's over here, I'll get rid of it again. The tattoo that's here will be stretched a little bit compared to the inside of the tattoo here. So there's all these little things that you can or you may or may not want to worry about when you're uh, making tattoos. You can just throw an image on there, let it stretch, blah blah blah. Um, that's fine if you want to make it more balanced, more exact, a better quality tattoo, then you have to compensate for the stretching. And by 
and when you compensate with the stretching that's where we use our scaling tool and like I said these are pretty simple tatters this is it. so we know she's going to be stretched we don't want to put her up here because she's going to stretch a lot so we'll bring her down to here and we're going to stretch her so she fits inside this first square line here and inside this first square line here because we don't want her to stretch too much she will still stretch a little on every arm and the larger your arms are the more it will stretch and the same with the legs so if you've got really big thick thighs um, the tattoo is going to stretch a lot more than a person that has thinner thighs and if you're making a tattoo to sell to people you can't make it would be very hard to make oh this is a tattoo designed for thicker thighs this is a tattoo designed for thinner thighs very, I don't think I've ever seen that in Second Life people make a tattoo if you want to have thicker thighs you have to um, understand that your um, tattoo will be stretched and not look as the same as a person that's wearing thin thighs so we've scaled her she's a little bit stretched She's a little bit thin. We scale her. Ew, she looks terrible, doesn't she? <laughs> now I'm going to go to reshow sharpen mask. See how she went dark. I'm going to put the radius down till she's lighter and move the amount up so she becomes a little bit clearer. It's still not that. Up close, it doesn't look that good. So we'll press OK and we'll leave it like that but you'll see later how it's it'll look better at a distance that's all I can tell you we go to colors and the white there like I said before it's not perfectly white that's slightly grey and that's not going to work with colored alpha. If we color that alpha that, there will be a slightly gray line around the outside of the tattoo where the border is there. So over here, we get our little cursor and we move it up to past this area. She's whiter. The outside is perfectly white to color the alpha. We say OK. And she's ready to go. We go to filters, recently used, color alpha, there she is. And we know we're not going to have this border, slightly grey line border around the outside because we we took the levels up. Now, once again, this is lighter than these, so we'll duplicate a layer. And she's relatively the same tone as the other um, image, images that we put there will merge her down so it's easy to work with, she's there she's there, that's there ready to go, ready and there you have three images one on the back, one on the front and one on the arm now we can duplicate her and make her darker but then drag her down and put it under the arm as well and it'll be the same as the front it may stretch a little bit um, but like I said there's nothing you can do about that that's just the way they design the avatar and the templates of the avatar so that's our, our tattoo ready to go simple tattoo nice little diamond thing on the back or jewel thing on the back thing under the breasts and our little mermaid there so I'm gonna um, make that invisible I'm gonna make that invisible there's your tattoo as an alpha image that you can save into the game and it will make a bomb tattoo I'll we'll go up to image we'll go down to merge visible layers if you flatten the image, you put the white back there. And that's no good. Otherwise you'll have a white avatar, you don't want that. Edit, undo flatten image. Go to image again, merge visible layers. 
um, merge with in the active group only yes discard invisible layers you can click all that I just use it like expanded as necessary merge with activity blah 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 and we'll merge it there we have it it hasn't changed it's exactly where it was before so now we have our image and we're ready to save it so we'll go up to file and this is how I do it because in GIMP you don't use save as you use export and this is the folder that I got all the images out of and so we're going to name this um, test tattoo for video now you can save it as a PNG file or you can save it as a target file um, I think it's TGA is it? yeah target files are apparently slightly better quality than a PNG file and both PNG, PNG and target files are much better image than a JPEG file never save, save it as a um, JP file. I don't like target files because I can't see them in my folders. They just come up as a GIMP image. So I just save it as a PNG file. So test tattoo for video. Um, hang on, let's put this. Test torso. Test torso tattoo for video. There you have it and we'll export that to the folder press export and you can press enter if you want or you can use your mouse and export uh, save the background color save resolution I don't really pay much attention to that I know that it's going to save it as an alpha image and we'll export that like I said some people make tattoos their way this is how I do it so that's ready to go. If you bring that image into the game, it will be very dark on your body. Most people don't like an extremely dark image on the body. They want it a little bit softer, and some people like really soft tattoos. So to make a softer tattoo, I go over to the opacity here, and it's at 100. And I will lower that down to 70. I would class that as a medium tattoo. So you have soft, medium and hard. So that's at 70. Um, now we can save that. Make sure you export it. And make sure you, um, if it's not a full tattoo, make sure you put either medium there or you can actually I put the number of the opacity that I've made it at there that way I can always refer back to it and just say I saved it at 70 or I saved it at 75 or I saved it at 65 whatever so there's our 70 and we'll export that there you have it you've made a tattoo now I will show you although I don't have time now I'll have to go in later um, I can't do it at the moment because I've got to go and do stuff in real life um, that's your tattoo it's ready to go I'll close that down and discard the changes so I'll close down GIMP and there are your two tattoos. There's the, uh, there's the hard file, the solid file, the original base file, and here's your test tattoo for simply for video. And there you have it. That's how I make tattoos for Second Life. Like I said, some people have their own ways to make it. Some people may say, ah, oh, you shouldn't do it that way, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. That's what I do. So, 
I hope that helps. Um, I will make another video that shows how to bring the tattoo into the game and then apply it to the body. Um, and we're talking about a bomb tattoo. We're not talking about tattoos for appliers. Um, the ta this you bring this tattoo in, you make a bomb tattoo. If you want to make a tattoo for an applier, you will then use that bomb tattoo. Um, what do you use? You use the number, the property numbers of that. Usually, you use the property numbers of it, but I'll explain that and place that into the script for the applier and then the apply will apply it to the body but anyway I don't make tattoos for appliers it's a pain in the butt and that's our bomb tattoo and I hope you have a really nice day I hope that was easy for you to understand um, you don't have to like and share in the comments or any of that rubbish I've just made that there I made this video because my friend asked me to make it for her. She wants to show her friend how to make tattoos and I've been making them for a long time. I said, ah, I'll make a video. It's easy for her to watch rather than sit there with no cards. And my friend has trouble with voice in Second Life, so yeah. There you go. Um, enjoy your day in real life. Enjoy your second life and I'll speak to you all later. Bye-bye.